Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of building a computer in Minecraft. Actually, it's not an episode. I, I'm kind of doing like a tutorial thing today. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So yeah, if you're going to get into building any kind of computers or anything, at some point inside of these things, you're going to end up with multiplexers like these guys over here. And uh, these, these, you know, they, they have some problems. They work though. I mean, that's kind of good. They work as intended, but there's a better way to do it than uh, just doing this. So, today we're going to talk about the uh, concepts behind how these work, and also how to make them, and how to make better ones, and uh, yeah. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and give you all a demonstration of how one of these things works. Well, first things first, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just make one real quick. So, this is a multiplexer. We have uh, this shape here. Now, the way it works is by doing, well, by moving a block here, you end up making it so that way this one does not power this block, and you can power this into this. And you may be wondering why exactly you'd want something that does this well. The reason is because if you, if you want to select between two different signals, for example, let's say that we have um, this one is on, but you wanted to say, you wanted to have this one. You can just flip it, and then you can have that one. So in computers, you oftentimes need to select between signals and things like that, and that's why these are useful. Um, I mean, there's probably other usages for these, but hey, I, I I don't make other things. So we'll go ahead and talk about why this. Well, actually, we've already talked about why this works. Um, we'll talk about the problems now. So, if you give a piston a one tick pulse, which I can't really do that with this thing, it won't let me, but if I use an observer, I can one tick this piston, which causes it to spit out its block. Which is bad. So, that causes a lot of issues with these things. There's also quasi-conductivity, so if you build over top of the piston like this, that actually powers the piston. Which, these two things cause a lot of problems, and this is why pistons are kind of just annoying to work with. They're not fun. So I had to come up with a solution to this problem, and uh, the simplest way I could think of was just to use a bunch of comparators and repeaters and things like that. Let's go ahead and get some white wool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate one of the setups, or one of the methods of doing this, which is to have it like this. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to make a design for this. I'm going to teach you the concepts to make a design for this, because it's better to have the ability to adapt something to how you need it to be, rather than just to, you know, have every single solution, because you won't always have the answer, and uh, that's something that you, you need to be able to find and come up with on your own. Alright, so here we have two signals, and, uh, two comparators set to subtract mode, and the reason why we want these comparators set to subtract mode is so that way we can hook them up and uh, power them off using blocks. So, for example, right here, we put a torch, and the reason we want that is so that way this one is on when this one is off. This one, however, needs to be powered via a repeater, so like this. So, I'll go ahead and give you all a quick little view of this. Boom. And we're going to go over here like so and just build this and connect these two things together. So now, when we hit, when it, when we, when we hit the switch, it's going to flip to the other side. And yes, let's go ahead and put some redstone lamps to make that much more visible. Now, usually at the end of these things, you have an OR gate, which is what I have here. So we have an OR gate there. And uh, let's go ahead and test it out. So right now, I have it switched to this signal, because this uh, this comparator is powered off. For some reason, this one is yeah, this one just isn't powered, so it's not going to have any... Okay. But then they'll say we switch it, and uh, then this one's going to turn off, and... Well, actually, no, this one's got to turn off. As you can see, this one's powered. So, boom. That is a multiplexer built with comparators. And what are the advantages of comparators, exactly? Well, comparators are faster... And just generally, I, I mean, they don't break as often. It's very hard to break a comparator. <laughs> so, I mean, they're also pretty tileable too. 
Uh, if we were to take this design and just repeat it over and over again, we could just um, kind of stack it. And it's as easy as this. You literally just have to put two of them next to each other and then you can fit them together. And uh, it does leave the minimum amount of space between redstone dust lines as well, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and try this again. So we can switch between these. Uh, let's go ahead and power this one on so that way when this one, when the other one turns off, this one will turn on. Boom. Look at that. It's very fast too, which is good. Because <laughs> unlike this thing, this thing is kind of kind of sluggish, I would say. Um, let me go ahead and just power it. Just to, it's kind of kind of slower. Probably not slower. There's probably a bit. I don't know. I don't know if it's slower or not. Because these guys are really fast, but that guy is uh, also pretty fast. It's hard to tell. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at another design, or some other designs I've used. And, uh, as you can tell, I've really had to adapt these designs to fit into this thing. <laughs> I mean, they make this thing way more compact, too. That is, that is another advantage of them. Because they're not as big, well, it's easier to fit them in a tiny space without quasi-conducting anything. It makes them really nice and compact. As you can see here, we got them, like, literally eight of them just stacked on top of each other. And then we have two more. Well, four of them stacked on top of each other, and then we have two more, so. Yeah, I'm still working on this thing, but it is pretty much almost done. Actually, no, it's got three more, because so it's basically seven right now. I need to add an eighth one for this layer, but that, uh, that's, not, that's not in the scope of this video, okay? Because the, these are big. They take a long, not, a long time to make. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this setup here. So these guys are actually doing the same thing... It's just, I have the line going underneath of it, and uh, these target blocks are actually very, very useful. Um, I've never used them before, but they actually allow you to hook into the torch and turn it off, which is something I like. And uh, I've started using them for everything, pretty much. Very nice block. So I'll go ahead and show you all how to make that design as well, even though I said I wasn't going to show you every single design. Because there's a million designs you can make with this. You, you can literally make a million designs with this. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, do this. So you have your comparators are kind of out of stack. They're not on the same layer. You don't want them on the same layer sometimes, but hey, it's fine. Okay, so we got a torch there. Repeater here. And then we just hook it up with a redstone line. And then we can attach these guys like this. And that's how you make that. It's very simple, and we also need a redstone line here as well, because I forgot to do that. But that should, if we turn these to subtract mode, that should uh, allow us to switch between the signals. So now it's off, on, off, on, off. Boom. It's like a very complicated switch. Anyway, I hope you all found this video kind of useful, or um, have enjoyed it. Because, I mean, I enjoyed making it, of course. So, yeah, if you all enjoyed or found it useful, you know, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. And I'll see you all next time, and, uh, you know, hopefully, something good happens.